This podcast is brought to you by the Kansas City Barbecue Store, the official provider of barbecue supplies to listeners of Pitmaster. The dog days of summer are here, which means it's prime barbecue season. The grills are kicking, and as we get in those last days of summer, you really got to make sure you have what you need. But it also means that the American Royal is right around the corner. From smokers and fuel to rubs and sauces, the Kansas City Barbecue Store has everything and anything you could want. Make the Kansas City Barbecue Store your one-stop shop for everything that you need for the American Royal. I know that I will. This year at the American Royal, we'll be doing our first live Pitmaster podcast broadcast from Kansas Speedway with the great folks at the Kansas City Barbecue Store. We hope to have a lot of teams come by and say hi, and we think it's going to be a lot of fun. So as a listener of the Old Virginia Smoke Pitmaster podcast, you can get 10% off of your order this American Royal season by using the code PITPOD, P-I-T-P-O-D, and for online orders at www.thekansascitybarbecuestore.com. Another week here on the Pitmaster Podcast, an Old Virginia Smoke Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Darnell, Pitmaster of Old Virginia Smoke Barbecue. And I wanted to do this interview in person, uh, but it just... The logistics of that site where we all were, it just wasn't going to be good if we recorded it like you guys would be hearing essentially 5,000 jet planes flying overhead, which would have been every generator under the sun. Um, But I am here with my good friends Jeff and Luke from Tire Smoke. How are you guys? Doing good. How are you doing, Luke? Not too bad. I am fantastic. Uh, both of these gentlemen are wearing headbands as we speak for a podcast, and we'll get to that later. Uh, I because I want to, I've known these guys, I think probably going on seven years now. I think we met you at Holy Smokes in 17. Okay, five years seems like longer it's, than that. It was in Cincinnati when you came down, yeah, and uh. You know, always been friendly, and in the times that we do get to see each other, you guys don't venture out this way, but we get out your way a few times. And, uh, you know, Michigan, we went to Michigan a couple of weeks ago and pulled in right behind Luke, and uh, I was like, this might be cool for neighbors with tire smoke, you know. So we set up, it's Thursday, and we go out to dinner. It was Jack Draw Day. Uh, which is notoriously one of the worst days of the calendar year for Old Virginia Smoke. Uh, we've been in the draw nine times. We've only gone to the Jack one time, uh, which was last year. So this year we're in Michigan and we go out to dinner and Ken's hitting refresh. And, and I already made peace with the fact we only had one one bung in it. And uh, I'd already made peace with the fact that that wasn't going to happen. And... Uh, so then the list came out, and I saw tire smoke on the list. And I knew, like, I was sad for three minutes, but I knew I had to get back to that cook site, even though Jeff wasn't there yet. I had to get back and put my put my arms around Luke and just congratulate him. It was, uh, I'm still, I, I, it still gets me emotional, because I know it's your guys' first time going, right? Yeah, it is. So I think last year was our first year with a with a bung in the draw. Um, this year we had three, so we knew we had a little bit better chance. But of course, as you well know, it's it's a complete crapshoot getting in or not. Uh, and we were lucky enough to have our our bung drawn for the Kentucky contest. So tell me, I just got goosebumps because I just thought about <laughs> when I found out what immediately happened when you guys found out. I mean, honestly, it was kind of like the state of shock kind of, I don't I, I would equate it to kind of winning your first GC. It, it's one of those where you don't know how to process that information. Um, so your, <laughs> your body, your body kind of goes into shock and, and kind of your, I mean, you're, you're thrilled of course. And, and you're, it, it's, it's one of those, especially where you're at a contest where you kind of got to look around and see how excited can I be? Because, you know, there's a lot of, 
other disappointed people. But then, like, like you said, you realize that they're all happy for you. Uh, they're, they're excited to see you go. So uh, it, it was kind of awesome to just be in that environment and and absorb all the immediate information from anyone and everyone who's ever been to the Jack uh, that they, you're going to get all the advice in the world within about two minutes of, of getting drawn. And then your your phone's blowing up. (laughs) Right. Your phone's going nuts and you don't even know how to respond because you can't. Yeah. You you just, you can't respond. And uh, you know, and, and what you said, Luke was very, you're like, you, should I celebrate? Should I not celebrate? You know, because there's people here that just got their feelings hurt. And, uh, you know, I've been through that whole gamut of all of it. And, uh, and fuck yeah, you should celebrate. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Absolutely. Something you, I, was, I was slightly disappointed last year when we didn't get it, but we only had one bone. You know, it was our first one. And then Chris and Heath from Hell Yeah got in as the Ohio home state draw. So we were completely like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's that's the whole when you get to that point that you can be happy about you know your friends getting in that's but you have to get in first for that really to take hold. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing that whole thing. So, but you guys are set up now for a fall of just awesome experiences, awesome barbecue experiences. You're going to your first Jack, you're going to your first Royal. Um, that's a lot to process. And it's a lot to be excited about. It, it, it really is. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of miles. And, and uh, it's my, my boss wasn't thrilled about my October schedule, but uh, it, it's, I, I explained it to him. It, it's their once in a lifetime opportunities. I'm not going to miss them. I don't, I don't mean, we'll, we'll make work work. Yeah. Right. You can work from anywhere. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, and it's it, it it is a lot of miles. Um but these are things where it's kind of like damn the torpedoes, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I and mean, so many of our coworkers are so supportive of us. They're like, "Did you guys win this weekend?" And this year three times we've been like, "Yeah." They're like that's fantastic. Now, do you guys work together? Yeah. In the same building, a little bit different departments, but yeah, similar job. Interesting. I did not know that. We actually met each other at a recruiting event. He was from Minnesota and I was from Alabama and we got, we got recruited together for the same company. So look at this. It's like a bromance. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. amazing. He, and yeah. he made fun of me cause it was cold and I thought it was really cold. And well, it was cold for Ohio, meaning 30 degrees. I was coming from North Dakota, went to the university of North Dakota. So I was coming from 35 below and he's coming <laughs> from 75, so he's absolutely <laughs> freezing, and I'm just about wearing shorts. Right, yep. right. Oh, man, I feel like there's so much to talk about. Uh, we had such a great time together in uh, Michigan. Uh, Jeff is very active with his phone. <laughs> <laughs> video of me and Luke singing Cindy Lauper is probably one of my favorite barbecue videos of all time. <laughs> I sent it to my wife and she was like, what in the world are you guys doing? You need to focus. And I was like, this is what we do. We we are focused. What are you that's, talking about? That's a normal Saturday morning. <laughs> right. It's what, it's what we do. <laughs> just when he panned to you and you were just belting out the lyrics, it was, it just made so much sense at the time. <laughs> it, the look, the look at, it was at Franklin this year on day two, Paul Keltner over at Rooters and Tutors was sitting on his porch and he saw me and Luke like dancing and he looked at us like, are these guys kidding? <laughs> but then we also have the other magical story from Michigan. Of oh, yeah. The pendant. <laughs> yeah. Flavor Flav. Yeah. Luke's Flavor yeah. Flav necklace. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, somebody thought it was a good idea to put their Yeti mug in their Jambo before they went to lunch so that nobody would take it. And uh, then Lit said Jambo (laughs) and uh, ended up with the lid like that that melted inside of the cup. The cup's still fine. It's still being rehabbed, but I will use it for the rest of my life. It looks pretty cool. I like it. You just got to get the lid for it. It's flame kissed. Yeah. Yeah. I call it the goblet of fire. It's not a big deal. I 
I bet if you send that picture to Yeti, they'll send you some stuff. Yeah, no, I don't need any more stuff. Uh, but I am going to send it to him. <laughs> what was the pit up to when you finally pulled it out? Uh, about 325. <laughs> so, so then I, I walk on the porch. Luke told me about it, and I walk on the porch and I see the melted lid sitting there on our porch. And I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna make him a necklace. I'm gonna make him a necklace, like flavor, flavor, flav style. And I was like, Do we have any string? And Luke's wife was there. Sarah was with us. She was like, Would you have any dental floss? I, I do have dental floss. <laughs> that's perfect. So that's what we did. We made him a dental <laughs> floss, flavor, flav necklace. And I had to get it here because I had to have it here for the podcast because I was like, this is this is too important of a of a barbecue memento that it can't be can't not be shared with the world. So you two started out uh, co-workers. So what made you get into barbecue? So, I mean, honestly, it kind of goes back to me. For some of our first trips, business trips for me down to our plant in Alabama and started actually eating some good Southern barbecue. Uh, I mean, being from Minnesota, it was crock pots and maybe boil your ribs and grill them. Um, So I really hadn't had the experience of good barbecue growing up. Um, So getting down there and eating some really decent and solid barbecue from roadside and stuff while we're on a business trip, um, come back up and started, got the barbecue bug, bought a cheap offset smoker, uh, bought a oil tank smoker with a couple other buddies, started doing random cooks. And then um, Jeff and I somehow saw a judging class um, in Ohio in 2015 and decided, all right, that sounds interesting. We can go eat some of the best of the best. Took that, got real involved uh, and, and learned as much as we could off of Barbecue Brethren. Um, then we somehow... Or on the KCBS website, I saw a post for a comp in 2016, about 40 minutes from my house. And it's like, all right, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to make Jeff sign or come with me. I had bought a Yoder by then and Jeff had a Humphreys by then. So sucked him into it. And then, hey, we're going to go do this and see what happens. Um, and that first contest then uh, in Lima, Ohio. Uh, Jeff took first in chicken, uh, got a ninth in ribs, and a ninth overall for our first contest. So we were absolutely hooked, signed up for four more for that year, and it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> Lima, Lima that, Ohio that, in 2016. It was a uh, pig mania in Lima, yeah. Ohio. Was I there? No, I don't think no. so. There was 30 teams, though. We've done a pig mania. You did Lebanon. Lebanon. Yes, that's right. That's right. You did the one in the casino. Yeah, yeah. That one was cool, too. No, we did another one in a park. Uh, it might have been the year before then. It might have been in 2015 because we weren't competing. Yeah. That was the second year of it. Yellow River won and we RGC'd. Yeah, so that would have been 2015 then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you guys have an interesting setup in that I don't get a vibe that I think you guys split duties, right? Pretty, Pretty much. much. Yeah. Which is... There aren't too many teams out there that that's successful with, but you guys have been really good with that and done really good this year with it. Yeah, we we split it 50-50 to start off with, but we're just – we both know what each other are doing. And so, I mean, I, I know the chicken and the brisket. He knows the pork and the, the ribs, but he knows what I'm doing and I know what he's doing, and we can course correct if we have to. And the perfect example of that was CCS this year in Indy. I couldn't go because of a, a death in the family, and so Luke just did it by himself and uh, pulled off a top 10 by himself. So it, it, we know what each other's doing. It's just yeah. after it was over, he was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> He's like, I want to sit down. I was tired. He, he he had help. I was trimming meat in his trailer. It was fine. <laughs> you trimming your meat. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that was helpful. He was like, are you going to do everything that you haul? I'm like, oh. <laughs> and while it's snowing, he's like, get in here and do this. I'm like, All right. Yeah, we have heat. It's good. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> So you guys, basically, that's cool. That's a great story um, about how you met at work and then started doing this together. And so you've had three wins this year. Is that accurate? Yeah, three wins this year. Three wins this year. You're going to the two majors this fall. 
man, what's your mindset going into that? I mean, it's one where we, we know we can cook good food. Uh, it, we know we've, it, it's also this game, it's, it's a bunch of luck too. You, you got to miss the wrong tables and, and hit some of the right ones uh, at the same time when you're, when you put out good food. Um, so I, I think there's, there's been an element of luck there too, but we're, a lot of teams around here know that we're real consistent. Uh, if you, if you go back through our history, it, it's, it's not a lot of ups and downs. We're always in it to some extent, uh, and right. have been, uh, have been at least for the recent past. Um, so it's one where, yeah, it, it's, we're, we're, of course, we're, we're going to take it serious. We're, we're shooting for finishes where we're hearing our names called. Um, but again, there's no expectations. It's, it's something we've never been to before and, and we're going to put our best foot forward. But um, we know we got to hit a little bit of luck there too. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we know if we cook our food, the judges should like it, but you got to hit the right tables and, you know, just especially the Jack, the celebrity judges I hear that makes a difference, but I mean, we're just going to go do our thing. I mean, we're going to have fun on Thursday, but Friday is, is a business trip. So we're just going to go do our thing. And are we nervous? No, I don't think so. I don't think we get nervous anymore. Uh, and I know I gave this advice to you in person. The one thing that both of you left off is enjoying this experience. And you, oh, yeah. need to, you both need to take both of these events in 100% yeah. in, as for what they are. Uh, the Jack is super cool. The Royals like being in a barbecue snow globe. <laughs> it's, I mean, everybody's there and it's just the first time you go, it's just such a thing to see, to see all the people that you see online all year and to see them all in one place at the same time. And it's just, it is just a fascinating thing and everyone's so nice. And, uh, I know you guys and, and, and a couple other teams have started a group chat of like rookies going to these things. And that was pretty cool. (laughs) Um, because that's the one thing that I like, I like doing, and I'm glad you guys reached out to me is like making sure that when you go to these things, that you're doing the right things and you're going to the right things and you're seeing, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to miss out on something that we should no. be doing. Right. Yeah. Our first Royal, nobody did that for us. And to the point where we, our site was on the dark side uh-huh. and, and like, we were so far away from all the like real competition people now granted some of that was my dipshittery and that i forgot to hit pay and we ended up not being able to get a spot on that side but i mean being away from that in our first one was it was tough but it was also a blessing because we got to see the real dark side of the hail arena and you know we were cooking in a zombie apocalypse on saturday morning there was nobody awake and just puke and vomit and piss and (laughs) <laughs> you know, we're the only people cooking and like, I was like, this is, this is like real shit. Like, <laughs> so I'm glad that, that, and take all the advice. This podcast is brought to you by barbecuedata.com. Barbecuedata.com is your one-stop shop for all of your barbecue competition data, historical data, calls, wins, placements, everything under one roof. It's a great way not only to track yourself in the standings, but also to track how you improve your scores from year to year. Listeners of this podcast can receive 20% off of a new subscription to barbecuedata.com with the code PITPOD. That's one word, all capital letters, P-I-T-P-O-D, PITPOD. So check your team scores, check on others, and do it all on barbecuedata.com. So let's get to some questions here. Let's do it. It's kind of weird because it's never ever been. We'll see how much we can get through because uh, it's it's two people. But what's been the most surprising thing to come out of competition barbecue for you guys? I'd say the French the friendships. I mean we, I mean we're friends with you. We only met you a couple times, and then like Heath and Chris from Elia, yeah, they're like our brothers that we never knew. So <laughs> just. And then Mark and Rich from the Barbecue Superstore. I mean, just I can name all 50 people. I can name drop 50 people. And it just the friendships. And people will literally give you a shirt off their back if you need it. I mean, it, everybody's so nice. I mean, yeah, I want to beat you. But uh, if you have a problem, I'm going to help you. And they're going to help you, too, if you need help. Right. So to me, I mean, it 
it's kind of cliche, the barbecue family thing, but it's, it's real. It's a real thing. Luke. Yeah. It's same thing. It, it's the friendships that I would have never had otherwise. And I'm sure you've experienced it is that that network goes deep. It, it's, we don't travel the country a lot, but I'm sure if we ever had a problem in Kansas, it'd be a half hour before we had someone out there helping us if we needed to. Um, so I, I think that just like Jeff said, the barbecue family is a real thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can't believe you guys claim Chris and little bear. <laughs> you can't use his real name on the podcast. That's okay. Little bear. That is verboten. I didn't even want to know it. And then he friend requested me and I'm like, I hate you for telling me your real name, little bear. We call, we call it, we call him Hank. <laughs> little bear. God, he's one of the greatest humans alive. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, man, I feel like there's, uh, yeah, let's get into these questions. Let's talk about stuff because you guys have lots of stuff. I've never seen a team that has more different options for their infrastructure and are willing to go through all of them at a contest just to make sure something's working. Just at the Michigan contest alone between the power outages and then the water situation, you guys, you guys have an answer for everything, but you're both engineers, right? Yeah. Correct. So that makes sense. What's one of the best or most worthwhile investments that you've made in competition barbecue? A hundred percent. The Southern Southern dimensions with the outlaw. That, that trailer has changed our lives. We were, we were at a point um, in 2019 where we were basically saying, I mean, we were at that point in time, we had a deep South, a motorcycle trailer. We were setting up bunks and, and tables in the trailer. So it was comfortable and it was doable, but it was to the point where you got home Saturday and you were so tired that Sunday was a waste. Yeah. Uh, so moving to an all-in-one purpose-built trailer um, with the pit on the porch, uh, it, it simplified things and, and it, it eliminated all the loading and unloading. Um, so we, we basically all, we got our Sundays back. So uh, for, for a team that's doing five a year, it's probably not needed. But if you start doing 10 or more a year, uh, having something that's purpose-built that you really aren't loading and unloading a lot of stuff, it really saves the fun of, of competition barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. That's I 100% cool. agree. My, my wife says I'm a completely different person than we used to be when I get home and I have so much less stuff to clean and it's just so much better. Absolutely. That's a big change that, that you can do now. That's a recent thing. What were some of the best decisions that you made when you first started? Uh, Luke taking Donnie Bray's class. No question. <laughs> like that was that was the, the learning curve killer right there yeah i mean we went from from not knowing what the hell we were doing to i think that first year on the deep south after taking donnie bray's class we were pretty consistently in the top 10 i think pulled the fourth place on our first contest that year which was our second year so it was that that alone kind of got us in the ballpark for sure really quickly your first class is always your best class. Yeah. Because that's the one that really smashes your learning curve and you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm yeah. not, uh, I didn't know shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, Luke, Luke and his wife took the class and took notes and then I just learned from it. And then I think the next year I took Keith Riles' class and that was another eye-opening, like, okay, this is what this guy's doing. Okay. Yeah, it's it's definitely... Definitely a, a game changer. However, those are all expensive things. If you have a purchase of $100 or less, like a little tool or a little trick, what's impacted your barbecue life the most in recent memory that's $100 or less? For me, it's like a chair. Your... Huh? For me, it's a comfortable chair. That 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 alone, have, having a good chair that fits you, that doesn't have pressure points, that you can be comfortable all day, that that's one of the biggest things. Because I mean, it, it was always a joke with the Gray Street guys uh, when they were running. They always had the lounge chairs, and it was sit and win. Because if you're comfortable and you're sitting down, that means you have time to think, you have time to focus on what you're doing, and, and you're 
in your zone. You're not distracted. You're not doing something else. So, so definitely having a comfortable chair and using it is, is an important thing. That's a good one, Jeff. I would say the headbands, man. I, it, I don't, I got so grossed out. First time I had to wipe his forehead off and he was making a pork box. <laughs> so then he found these headbands and I was like, I'm getting some of those. Those are great. And actually the so first that- time I ever used the first time I ever used them was on uh, OBR deployment in Dayton, Ohio, after a tornado hit. And uh, we went there and, and deployed down there, and it was 95 degrees. It was so hot. And we were outside cooking. And uh, I was like, all right, these headbands are sweet. I'm getting some, too. But when he bought them, I was like, yeah, those are great. So that was really a personal story. Like, I don't want to wipe sweat off of Luke. It's part of it. Well, he's, <laughs> he's making the pork box, and he's about to drip sweat in the pork box. I'm like, no. <laughs> well, it's it's funny because it's become kind of a thing now, especially like during COVID, having to wear masks. As a bigger guy, you sweat with a mask on. Oh yeah. So, so the headbands just became a thing, and I pretty much wear them consistently now, anywhere. Yeah, you do always have it on. Uh, that's awesome. Those are good things. Uh, <laughs> so, who's impacted your guys' life the most in competition barbecue? See, that's, it's really tough to say because, and this is something that kind of, it's a misconception about the Ohio, Indiana, Michigan area. There, there really isn't a killer out there for a, a team to look out for. And it's the top team. It, it's a top 20 in, in our area that you really got to watch out for. But basically there's, there's 20 teams at any given competition that absolutely no one would be surprised if they won. So to say that there's one person is really tough, but it's in general, it's, it's everyone around all the, the competitive teams uh, that we're friends with um, Mark and Rich from Superstore. The, both those guys are, are guys that we talk to a lot, Brian and Brendan from the bus. Um, so it, it's, it's really, again, it's more of a community kind of, we, the, the Midwest teams kind of stick together and kind of, all work together in a certain sense. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, early on, we had several teams that kind of mentored us. I mean, even at our first competition, we were next to, to Bill Thunderhog. And so it was just, we didn't know oh. who he was. And I think, at the, I think at the time, he was like in the top 15 in KCBS. <laughs> and we didn't know this guy. And we, we didn't even think he got up that morning. We were like, did he even go light his pit? And then <laughs> he came over and talked to us. And he, you know... He was real nice to us, real friendly, and we've been good friends with him ever since. And uh, that day, uh, Luke, after I turned in chicken, he took a piece of chicken. I was like, take a piece of chicken over there to Bill. And I was cleaning up, and you know, and then Luke came back to, to work on ribs. And uh, I was like, what do you, what do you say? He's like, he, he took a bite, tossed it in the trash, and said top five. I was like, man, he's just messing with you. Whatever, dude. No, he was right. First place. Now, ask me why we got first place. I have no idea. Apparently, the judges liked it that day, but. <laughs> and then before before we left, Bill handed us his laminated timeline. He was like, hey, guys, you know, glad you're here for your first competition. Here's my timeline. And we didn't know what half the stuff on it even meant. But right. he didn't know us. He didn't know us. And he's, he's still, a, I would consider him a close friend. I talk to him all the time. That's awesome. When you guys hear the word successful in terms of barbecue, who's the first person that comes to mind? Darren. Yeah, I mean the the obvious choices are the the Darrens, the Brads, Tim, Tuffy, guys that can even if they're not competing consistently can come out and kick everyone's ass at any given time. Um, but honestly, one that's maybe hasn't been on said on your show before is a guy like Malcolm Reed, someone who's mm-hmm. taken it from grassroots competing with his buddies to youtube and it's become a brand and he's really a great ambassador for for barbecue so i think a guy like malcolm reed is someone that really i would consider truly successful in barbecue yeah getting to meet him last year was amazing we got to meet him at jay craig and uh he's exactly who you think he is oh yeah he's uh just a genuine dude i need to have him on here um, you need you need to get him on. You need to get Mark Williams on. You need to get Jay Durbin on. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> I, I always thought Jay Durbin's accent was like him faking it up in the videos. No, that's that's how he talks. 
he's he's hilarious too. So do you guys, um, I think it's a little, a little well documented at this point that you guys do like music when you cook. Uh, Correct. So tell me about this playlist. It, it really is the most random stuff we can find. Uh, anything from classic rock to hardcore gangster rap. There's some country in there. There's some one hit wonders, new pop music. It's, it's really just kind of, and it's become a thing where if someone starts to listen to it and tries to find a pattern in the music, they get angry because you can't find a pattern in the music. No need to get angry. You can't find the pattern. Yeah. But you can also not even try to interject a different song. Nope. Hey, I, there, I, I, I played Millie Vanilli for you. You did, but at it was end. at great cost to me personally. <laughs> and Country Roads. Yeah. Yeah, that did happen. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, you guys are pretty amazing neighbors. That was a lot of fun. So I don't let's know, get... According according to Thunderhog and Barbecue Bus, we're bad. We're bad luck. So you broke you broke the bad luck train. Yeah, I mean, I did. I, the one regret I have is that we did have to leave early. I wish we could have stayed. Uh, it was hot, man. You guys need to get out of there. <laughs> well, we just we had a long way to go and had to get at least part of the way that night. So yep. And with those roads in Michigan, we'd still probably be trying to find the exit onto that highway. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. So let's get into it, because you guys have a lot of shit. Habits, rituals, routines, superstitions. Let's go. I know you guys have a ton. I mean, there, there's a lot of little ones. The, the one that's been consistent since we got the Southern Dimensions is I like the pit in my underwear. You like the what? I like the pit in my underwear. I noticed. So, what do you mean you noticed? You weren't up. No, that's true. I wasn't even there. <laughs> is, is it, and, and it all started because I wanted more sleep. And by me lighting the pit in my underwear, I saved three minutes of sleep. Because I go back after I've lit it, which takes a minute, I go back in and change. So it saves me that little bit of extra sleep. Wow. So, so it's become a thing. God, we're starting right at pit lighting. What else do we got? I mean, I mean, the music's one. I don't know if we have a whole lot. The music's done at 11. Yep. Yep. Music's done music's at 11. off at 11. That's focus time then. I mean, we, we used to do the, the Mexican Friday night, but now we pretty much cook or bring salads or stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of gone out the window we're fairly regimented to our schedule, but we're not real, real strict on this has to be done at within this 10 minutes or the cooks all the way off or something like that. It, it's, we try to stick to things, but in, in general, we'll go with the flow with a lot of things. There's no other trinkets or got to knock on the trailer three times or nothing no, like it's, that. There's barbecue puppy, which is Luke's daughter's little, dog she put in the trailer when we got the trailer it's a little stuffed animal but that's it um other than that no i mean it's it, we we start looking at stuff different because we listen to your show and we're like well maybe that's a thing i don't know and then and then it gets blown up we're like, okay that's definitely not a thing okay we don't have to worry about that anymore yep. you're both wearing headbands during a podcast so let's just <laughs> put that out there i was sweating man Oh gosh! All right, we already asked that question. You're so. How many do you guys do a year now? Fifteen, twenty, ten to twelve. Well, I think ten to twelve. Yeah, that, that's our, that's a kind of our sweet spot. We try to do. I mean, our goal is once every three weeks. Is we try. That's a good pitch for us between work and family stuff. Uh, yeah. keep, keeping everyone happy. Um, I, I, I mean, in order to do. 15 20 around here you got to start driving over five hours a lot and kind of five hours is our it's not a hard limit but that's where we try to stay under uh, right and, and we can we can do 10 to 12 pretty easy uh within that five hour limit yeah no that's good and it's it's not a bad schedule now you're 
planning for the week before, is it the same every time? Yeah, for me, for sure. Much much less so for me. Uh, I mean, I've got I've got a seven year old daughter, so between her activities and and just work and whenever I can find time, um, it's I, I'm real inconsistent as far as if I'm bringing frozen or trimming ahead of time and bring frozen meat or if I'm picking stuff up early in the week and, and trimming it on site. So I, I'm real inconsistent. I mean, I'm pretty good about making up all my sauces and injections on Wednesday, but that's about the best I'm at right now. It's not lost on me that I lost your frozen ass pork. <laughs> it was, it was frozen for, it was frozen for a long time. It, it was frozen. thawed by the time I injected it. Which was like nine thirty at night. It was eight, yeah. It was a yeah. lot later than I wanted to inject it, yeah. Right. And then you won pork the next day. Yeah. The thing I'm worried about though is like I was getting on him because I was like, dude, you're behind schedule. You're like you're like hours behind schedule. And then we won pork for the first time ever. And I'm like, that better not be a thing. It's not. Because the money muscle was thawed, so I injected the money muscle on time. So the the rest of the butt didn't get injected on time. So now you got to do it the same time. I, I might have to, yeah. Now you've created this monstrosity in your timeline that you're going to hate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny. Uh, you guys are uh, two of the best people that we've met in our travels. And uh, we always have a great time when we get to see you. And I couldn't have been more happy that night see your guys' name on that list. Um, very cool, and I can't wait to experience this fall with you. You guys are in the same neighborhood at the Royal, and uh, I think we're going to have a, yep, we're gonna have a really good time. However, we can't not address these rapid-fire questions. Okay. So I hope that you're ready. I, I guess we got to be. Got to be. What do you see about barbecue on social media that upsets or bothers you? Uh, let's see. In in general, I'll say it's just a lack of respect. And, and it goes both ways, kind of from, from the guys that don't know what they're talking about to the experienced teams. And then I see occasionally a little bit the other way. Some of the experienced teams not really – putting themselves in the shoes of a new cook or a guy that hasn't competed yet. That's interesting are interested in doing it. So it, it's, it's rare, but it, it comes up just in general guys, not understanding what other people know or in the other sense, kind of guys that, that do know what they're talking about, kind of not remembering where they came from. Right. Yeah. It's completely that. And it's, it's, I, it's not a disrespect to the backyard cooks and stuff, but if you're in a competition specific group and a new team is asking a competition specific question and you answer, I season my brisket with salt, pepper, and rabbit and butcher paper. That's perfect. Every time that's not helping anybody. Like that's fantastic brisket, but it's not going to do well in a competition. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it just like Luke said, it's the lack of respect. So just, yeah. It's different animals, and just have respect towards people, and be you know, be respectful and be helpful. Right. Do you guys have any pr- uh, favorite pre, during, or post competition meals? Nothing anymore. I'd say. I mean, post competition is something I miss a lot. There was a guy, uh, name was Ted, was smoking four play barbecue. He always had a thing with frozen gummy bears oh, after brisket turn in. They're and so good. It is the most refreshing and best thing ever. Now, we don't have a fridge or freezer in our trailer, so we can't do it. But if you have a freezer in your trailer, throw a pack of gummy bears in the freezer. After brisket turn in, pop a couple of them. It'll change your life. Yeah, amazing. No shit. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he came All over right. and was like, I got some frozen gummy bears. It was an accident. My wife accidentally put them in the freezer. But they're amazing. You want some? Hell yeah. Huh. All right, Tiff. Write it down, folks. <laughs> Do you have a favorite present that you like to give to people and you can't say frozen gummy bears? Bourbon. Bourbon, yeah. for sure. Bourbon. Barbecue or bourbon. Yeah. yeah. Bur- bourbon. That's a great gift. At any time. I may have had a little bourbon earlier. A little bit. 
Yeah. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing. I'm having a great week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you could get a giant, if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, getting a message out to millions of people, what would it say and why? I mean, I really don't got a good answer for this other than maybe just be nice or smile, lighten up. <laughs> I mean, just just take things a day at a time. It, it, we're gonna, all going to get through it. Um, yeah, you don't have to be so serious. Just be nice to people, man. Yep. I love it. I love it. Everyone says that on this podcast, yet there's still this dearth of everyone being mean all the time. I even caught myself today yelling at somebody in traffic. And I went, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> Just stop it, man. Stop it. They, they can't help it. They're from Maryland. It's a natural <laughs> thing. Natural thing. All right, guys, tell us where people can find you online and talk about some of your partners if you want. All right. So we're Tire Smoke Barbecue on Facebook and Instagram. Um, got great sponsorship help from uh, the Barbecue Superstore and uh, also Royal Oak Charcoal. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, you know. and Mark and Rich have been been partners of ours for a long time, and Royal Oak, so as they've been partners with us for a while too. So, we uh, we 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 are loyal people, and we applaud loyalty. So yeah, it's they're they're all good people. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, I can't thank you enough for being on here. I'm glad that I can get you guys out there. That's part of my what I want to do. And... I'm glad we we're able to sit here and talk with a TV star, man. I'm just oh. I'm in awe. <laughs> Stop it. Damn, I forgot to get my selfie with you last weekend. We'll have time for that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> See you in a few weeks. Absolutely. And uh, you know what? Everyone pay attention to this team and let's see what they got this uh, fall, hopefully. And we're going to show them a good time. So, uh, Jeff, Luke, it's been great to have you. And uh, we will we'll see you soon. Yes, Man. sir. Thank you for listening to Pitmaster, an old Virginia smoke podcast. Be sure to subscribe and like the podcast, rate the podcast, and share it out with all your friends. Also, be sure to check out the old Virginia smoke YouTube channel as well. Tune in next week for another great episode of Pitmaster. For companies interested in advertising, please contact Old Virginia Smoke directly via www.oldvirginiasmoke.com. Pitmaster, an old Virginia smoke podcast, is edited by Chris Sedanka. Pitmaster, an Old Virginia Smoke podcast, is a property of Old Virginia Smoke, LLC. All rights reserved. Copyright 2022. Old Virginia, Old Virginia.